I got your receipts for you. I got your receipts for you right here. Here are your receipts. Here are your receipts. <laughs> Yes, folks, it is indeed a Victory Monday, and yes, the Jets are cashing in on some big-time receipts, and the Giants are as well. Both teams are looking pretty good right now after huge victories on Sunday afternoon. The Jets absolutely destroy, demolish the Green Bay Packers by a score of 27-10 to to improve to 4-2. and All the naysayers, and we've been hearing from them a lot since the beginning of the season, those who thought that this uh, Jets team was a colossal it was going to be a colossal failure those who had said that this team would start 0 and 9 boy did they have a lot of egg on their face they have they are wearing that egg on their face right now as this team looks pretty good now this video is not only just reaction to what we saw yesterday but it's also kind of a way to pump the brakes just a little bit in both directions in a lot of ways because not only we're we hearing from the uh, not only we have to look back and laugh and all the uh, all those who had criticized and chastised the Jets going into the season, but there are some who are getting a little bit delirious. Some who have even I've heard on uh, you know other other stations who have said that the Jets are a, a deep playoff run contender. Uh, let's not get too crazy yet. This is a team that is again a team with a lot of young talent, has a lot of great play, very good playmakers on both sides of the ball. Uh, we know, of course, with the offense, guys like Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall and Michael Carter, Braxton Berrios. We all know the guys on offense, what they can do. But defensively, was a huge coming out party for the Jets against the Green Bay Packers. I know, I know Aaron Rodgers was hurt. He has a thumb injury. I don't care. The man was out there for almost the entire football game, and the Jets absolutely smacked him, smacked that offensive line, smacked around the Green Bay Packers uh, from kingdom come. Uh the Packers had no answer, none, for the Jets' front seven. Absolutely none. Quinn and Williams, Quincy Williams, both of them dominated the line of scrimmage. Quinn and Williams with a couple of big sacks. Quincy Williams with a couple of big hurries. Also had a, some huge, I don't mean game-changing tackles in this ball game. I mean, I think Aaron Jones uh, got lifted off the ground and pummeled into the ground. Talk about, when I look at this game for the Jets, uh, to me, to me, I'm sitting there in the first half. I'm terrified. I really am terrified. Game is the Jets aren't moving the football very much at all. It's three to three uh, going into the half. The Jets had just missed a field goal, and I'm thinking to myself, well, there's a probably a good chance that Aaron Rodgers is going to come out here in the second half and light it up. Didn't happen. The Jets continue to put on enormous pressure on that Packers offensive line. Continue to put on put up enormous pressure on Aaron Rodgers. Again, had no answer whatsoever, and the Jets. Turned it on big time in the second half. Zach Wilson rolling out, hitting Corey Davis on a big play, 41 yards down the field, setting up the Braxton Burrios, uh, end around touchdown run for 20 yards. But really the turning point of the game wasn't even that. It was the block punt. That was the turning point of the game. Packers had no answer on their, on their ensuing possession, and then the Jets come in hard on the blitz on the punt. They blocked the punt. Michael Clemens picked up by Will Parks, who scoots into the end zone for the touchdown, and it makes it a 17-3 game, and really it was all Jets at that point. That was the turning point of the game. And yes, I know Green Bay came back. They had got some big calls from the officials. They tried to help them out a little bit. They did help the Packers get a touchdown. But the Jets, and this is a sign of maturity of a young football team, answered the call right away. Nice touchdown drive, Feeding the rock to guys like Brees Hall, Michael Carter, and, you know, Brees Hall taking it down the field for 34 yards for a touchdown run. Man, that guy is good. I mean, there are some people who actually question whether the Jets should have taken Brees Hall. Believe it or not, this guy has got a lot. He might be a generational talent at the running back position. Uh, he is that. He looks like he could be end up, end up being that good. 116 yards rushing for Brees Hall on Sunday afternoon. Guy has 391 yards rushing, is averaging 5.1 yards per carry already. 
Uh, he has been dynamite at this point. So the expectations now for the Jets now change. It goes from being a team that could be, you know, still going through some transition. And look, even I will admit, I had the Jets at six wins at the start of the year. Boy, that prediction has to change just a little bit. The modest expectation at this point would be for a team to at least, at the very least, bare minimum, contend for a playoff spot. Before, the thought was, hey, look, maybe this team could, you know, show some more improvement. Maybe, I know, I know I've know, had people, friends of mine come on here and say, maybe the Jets get seven, eight wins. Maybe they push late for a wild card. Now the ex- expectation is, why not? Why not see if this team can get into the playoffs? Maybe this team can get a wild card berth at the very least. That's a modest expectation now. And you look at the schedule. The Jets play a big game in Denver. They then have New England after that. Who's to say with if the Jets continue to play at this high level that they can't keep winning, finding ways to win games? Now, let's be fair here. Eventually, the Jets are going to get tripped up. Eventually, they're going to have a bad football, a bad game here where things are not going to go their way and where they're going to get challenged in a way that they haven't been up to this point. So that game is coming, and there are going to be a couple of games like that that are coming. The Buffalo games are not going to be easy by any stretch of imagination, and certainly the Patriots games are not going to be any uh, easier because all of a sudden the Patriots, I guess they found uh, lightning in the bottle again here with Bailey Zappi who's been lighting it up under center for New England. <clears throat> so it's not going to be any it's not going to get any easier. But for the Jets, they just keep finding ways to take those receipts. They're taking names and they're, tick, they're kicking ass right now. <laughs> All right, folks, very quickly here, I got Mr. Feuerstein. Dan, how you doing? I'm doing excellent. I'm doing wonderful. I can't believe what I saw again on Sunday. Very quickly, just give me your thoughts on, on the win, how big that was. That's a huge win. I mean, there's without a doubt, that's the biggest win of the season at this point in time because no one can complain anymore that the Jets beat a backup. They can't complain anymore that the Jets beat a third stringer. We beat Aaron Rodgers. The Jets beat Aaron Rodgers, one of the top quarterbacks in the National Football League. And when you stop Aaron Rodgers the way the Jets did and the way the Jets' defense just basically pounded him, hit him, took him to the woodshed, and basically just spilled his guts out on the Lambeau Field, grass field, I'm telling you right now, the New York Jets are a team that nobody very soon, nobody wants to face in the NFL. And like I said, like I said, this is a team that's the, it's it's still developing. It's still a young team. You know, so I know there's some people who went a little delirious saying that the Jets could go on a deep playoff run, but we're, we're you know we're pumping the brakes a little bit. We're saying that this is a team that hey, look, it's not outlandish to say at least at least challenge for a wild card because they yes. they have the they have the talent right now. They do. I mean, Sauce Gardner's been amazing. Brees Hall has been amazing. Garrett Wilson's been amazing. Jermaine Johnson's been amazing. Michael Clemens has been amazing. Sadly, Max Mitchell is hurt, but he was showing to be amazing as well. Ruckert, we haven't seen much of yet, but that's okay. We can we can let him learn on the sidelines to see what both Conklin and Uzoma can be as a very dangerous pass catching and solid blocking tight end at the same time. So as of right now, Ruckert will get his opportunity, but for now he's learning. But other than that. These two, these past two draft classes, last year with Zach Wilson and Elijah Vera Tucker, and now this year with mm. this draft class, has been amazing. Which guy right now is the standout for you? Is it Brees Hall? Is it Garrett Wilson? Is it is it Sauce? I mean, who who is it right now for you? Okay, it's really tough because everyone's been amazing, but at the moment, Brees Hall and Sauce Gardner are one A and one B. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. The Feuerstein's fire has spoken again, folks. There he is. You got to love the way this team is tenacious on the defensive side of the ball. Special teams are solid. They run the football very well. The question at uh, least you have to have is, obviously, at quarterback, Zach Wilson. Now, of course, Zach played great a couple weeks ago against Pittsburgh and was a big reason why they won that game against Pittsburgh. Last couple of weeks against Miami, and against Green Bay, more of a game manager, just kind of stepping back, taking what the defense gives him, 
and the Jets focusing on running the football, and it's worked very well. I think a fair question is going to be when, and there's going to be a game at some point when the Jets running game gets stalled a little bit, can Zach Wilson put the game on his shoulders and move this game vertically? You got, again, you tip your cap to the Packers secondary for taking away some of the big, some of the lanes for the Jets as far as passing is concerned. But that's going to be the question moving forward now. Yes, this is a team that is young. This is a team that could challenge for the playoffs and has a lot of talent that could certainly get take this team to the playoffs. But can the, Zach Wilson be that more than just a game manager in key spots and in big games when things aren't? going as smoothly game plan wise for the Jets that's gonna be the question moving forward but man, same thing now the Giants they escape uh, against the Ravens they had to have some crazy things happen Lamar Jackson fumbling the ball then hurrying to hurrying his throw uh, and it turns into an interception by Julian Love then the Giants turn around and Marcus Peters picks off Daniel Jones in the end zone Peters gets called for pass interference Giants get another chance. Saquon takes it in. Touchdown. Giants take the lead. It was some crazy stuff at the end of that football game. Kenyon Drake had a big game for Baltimore. He had 119 yards rushing. Giants couldn't stop him. But when it mattered the most, the Giants got pressure on Lamar Jackson and forced some big turnovers. And that was the difference in the football game for them. But hey, look, 5-1 and one is 5-1. and one. You can't sneeze at it. And they're right there, right there with the Philadelphia Eagles, who, believe it or not, are 6-0. and oh. So the Giants right in the mix. For an NFC for the lead in the NFC East, believe it or not, they're right there, and they too are a team that again, coaching has been key for the Giants so far here in the early going. You love what uh, what Brian Dable has brought to that team overall, and you got like what Link Martindale has brought to that defensive side of the ball. He's brought more of an edge that we haven't seen from some time for the Giants. So, man, oh man, it is it is amazing. It is an amazing, amazing time right now in New York for both the Giants and for the Jets to see these two teams, two teams that a lot of people forgot, a lot of people had written off, a lot of people thought, okay, this team is developing in the case of the Jets or in the case of the Giants, this team's trying to reevaluate what they have. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, both teams in the thick of a playoff race, I granted only six in, into week six going into week seven. Like and subscribe, folks. Leave your thoughts below. How do you feel about things going right now for as far as the Jets and our Giants are concerned? We'll talk to you next time.